on channel one there and also on the audio stream and all many places that we may be uh, which would include rlmradio.xyz freedomsnetwork.com and on the internet radio and on tuned in and on oh heck everywhere you know uh, we're just we're just about everywhere you can be uh, uh, as far as that audio stream goes I think everywhere you could be <laughs> Don't quote me on that. Anyway, it's been a hell of a week, and uh, we're here. We're here. I'm here, and Moose Girl is here. Isn't she? I am. I am here. She are here. <laughs> right. Here I am. Yeah. So, uh, welcome everybody out there uh, listening in, tuned in from all the various nooks and crannies of the world. Yes, welcome to the Freakers Ball once again. Or yeah. if it's your first time, welcome to Freakers Ball. Yeah, if it's your first time, let us know. We'll we'll Yeah. We'll, we'll Freakers do... Virgin. Any Freakers Virgins out there? <laughs> or freaky virgins for that matter. Um Well yeah, I mean that works too, but uh, if that's your thing. Yeah, yeah, well yeah, virgins tend to be a little less freaky than the Yeah. Than the seasoned puritanical. <laughs> they're, they're too scared. They don't know what to do. They're in love with Jesus, a lot of them. I'm just uh, guessing. I, I, I don't know what I'm okay. now. If you say so, I, 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 don't, I don't know anything about that. Uh, any, anyway, so I just want to let people here because we haven't done, done it for a while. So, uh, yes. howdy to Barman. Hey, Barman. You out there in the living room hanging out? Uh, and myself and yourself. And uh, Miss Kate. And the Phantom and Anti and Asmo and Ben Wah, Bethy, Miss Bethy, Jell Sedoni, uh, Chloe and Colfax and Cyborg Noodle. That's a bot. Somebody's bot. Uh, we got the Don Carroll and uh, Dakota and Echelon and Frumpy and Gramsy. Gramsy, what the hell happened there? I clicked something too hard. <laughs> um, <laughs> we got Don C. We got Java Doctor. JJ, JJ, Jays, and Wanda Teco, and Kozu, and Meester Brow, and Moe, and a bunch of poxes there. Uh, se se several poxes in a row. And we got Pone Sauce, and Rain, and the Fluke Bot, and the Sock Puppet, and the Skittle Bot, and Romza, and Vin E. Welcome to y'all. Yay, Vin E. Woohoo! That's right. Sun means the son of a sun son. What? <laughs> All right, if you say so. Sun means sun. All right. Not literally, maybe not an exact translation, but that's where, the, like, the son of God literally means the fucking sun. Okay, well then... Think the, about it. If we didn't have if the, the sun... sun Exist. If the if the son is the son, who's the dad? The universe. There better be some big ass star out there, man. Yeah. <laughs> sun's pretty big. It's Mother Earth. They call it Mother Earth. Well, That's our mother. I, I say the sun's pretty big. We should buddy. treat our mothers kindly. And being a mother, I know this because I have been treated unkindly before. You know, for being a mother by my own children. And it's like, really? Yeah. You know? Yeah. I mean, come on. But you should respect your mother, your mother Earth. But speaking of the sun, uh, tomorrow, yeah. tomorrow is it tomorrow? There will be a okay. uh, a solar eclipse. It will only be a partial. Okay. Um, And I personally probably won't get an opportunity to see it. And you might. Uh, according to timeanddate.com, um, tomorrow, uh, August 11th, 2018, is a partial solar eclipse. will be visible from northern and eastern Europe, northern parts of North America, which would be you, 
and yep. some northern and western locations in Asia. Well, it depends. It could be just Canada. I mean. Oh, true, true. You know what I mean? Well, That's they have a map North here. North America. Um, they, they have a map here, and it, and it doesn't look like oh, it hits okay. you. It, it okay. looks like Alaska gets it. Okay. And, well, that's part of North America. So supposedly. So some, some of that other. Oh wait, there's a. It, it, it's got. A, it's got. This is a. This is an activated map here, which shows. Oh, an activated um, map. You gotta love that. Which shows I, what now? I, I gotta. I gotta play that again. Man. Did really. we finish saying hi to everybody? I, I think so. I think so. Oh okay. Hang on. Hang on. Look at. Look at it. Look at it. It's. It's. No, you didn't quite get to you. <laughs> okay. Well, that's fine. You know, I'm good. I'm all good with that. Okay. All right. Yeah, it comes close, but no cigar. No cigar. No cigars for the moose. No. Hey, that's fine. <laughs> um. So yeah. Bummer. So here you can look at this page and check your own I'm... locations. My my buddy Charlie Parr hurt himself. Uh oh. Yeah, broke his shoulder. Well, that's no good. He thought he was fifty. He he forgot that he was the age that he is, and he went out skateboarding with his eleven year old daughter. And, and how you know, old is he? in Duluth, Minnesota, and how, there's a lot of hills in Duluth. Minnesota. How old I don't is know, he? He's probably never been there, but there's a lot of hills there. How old is he? He's fifty one. He's a youngster. Yeah, well, he he overestimated his abilities on the skateboard, apparently. <laughs> so anyway, he's going to be laid up for a little bit. That's okay. He'll come back. He'll be fine. He'll, he just has to recover from his broken shoulder that he broke in three places, apparently. I, th I thought he was older than that. Had to have surgery and everything. Yeah, no, he looks a little bit haggard and stuff, but he's he's in his fifty. He's fifty one. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. But uh the his haggard look kinda adds to his appeal, you know. What I mean? Oh yeah, definitely you know, that that he's a folk player, uh Right. So. I mean everyone's got their like niche or their thing, you know. And he he's just He's Charlie, you know. He's Charlie. <laughs> but no, I mean that good good vibes to you, Charlie. I hope you heal up quickly. Make sure you rest and smoke a lot of weed, buddy. Yeah, hell yeah. I because that helps with bone healing. We've talked about that. There's been stories and studies done. Smoking weed helps bone heal faster. Dang it's right. Been proven. Scientifically proven. Absolutely. It has been so. Smoke some weed, Charlie, and heal up, and make sure you get a lot of rest. Cause I know when I broke, whenever I break a bone, I get I feel really tired, like for the first couple of weeks, or maybe for the first like week after it happens. Yeah. And that's just your body like needing to rest so the bone can heal. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's taking taking its energy from from the rest. Yeah. Right. Exactly. The healing of bones takes some energy out of your body. You know. Yeah. So that's why you need to rest a lot. I mean, I remember when I broke my foot, that was three bones that I broke, and I, I needed surgery on that. But I was super tired. Right. For the first, like, week. You're more tired than normal, and it, it, that's true. It's because your body is healing a bone. I mean, Sure, any, you know? anything, you know, whenever you get some kind right, of right. Uh, bacteria or virus or whatever, it's it's got to... Right. You know, take your take the juice from you. Right. If you have an infection, you know it's gonna you're gonna be tired and run down after a while if you don't like take care of it. You know. Sure, sure. Yeah, you know, but no, it's just like to me this is common sense. But I mean, I feel really bad that that happened, but it, you know, it should happen. You know, they all think we can do whatever. <laughs> you know? I mean, some people are not meant to skateboard. Period. I would be one of them. Like I would, even if I grew up in the ear or like in California when the skater thing came, first came out, got really big. Right. You know, I would not have been good. I was a good roller skater, but the skateboard day, I never could just get. I'm sure that if I was around it enough, I would have learned it. 
but I didn't know a lot of skater kids. Like, we weren't, it, it was just starting to be big back in the 70s, you know what I mean? Like, 76, 77. I remember one, I got a skateboard for Easter or something, and it was the piece of crap skateboard fucking well, what are you, holiday not, or something. Wait, who, you and it was like the lowest of the lowest level of skateboard that you could get. They, I, they, I, I remember gives, thinking to myself, who, my parents don't get it. They don't wait, know wait, wait, wait. the secret but most, fails, and I need the, the real deal here. This is a fucking piece of shit. But, but most, <laughs> who, who gives out gifts on Easter? Well, Easter or whatever. I don't know what holiday it was exactly, Grant. You know, I don't know. I think it was Easter, like, you know, with your Easter basket. You know, we used to do the Christian Easter thing. I mean, the Easter morning thing isn't even the Christianity date. A little bit. Maybe. Um, I'm pretty, sure, I'm pretty sure the Easter bunny's in the Bible. But uh, this is back in the yeah. 70s. I don't know. I'm my parents do. I don't fucking know. Don't ask me, you know. All I know is I wanted a skateboard, and I know that the one I got, was a piece of shit. <laughs> what, what, what was it? Pink? No, it was. They had only two colors at the store: red and blue. Ah, oh, okay. I got a red one or blue one, and my brother got the red one. I don't know. But anyway, all I know is that in order to be a good skateboarder, you have to have. This was the same applied to roller skating. Okay, you had to have the urethane wheels. If you didn't have the urethane wheels, you were fucked because. Those are the best wheels. See what I'm saying? Sure. So you got all your friends up there. They got the gear thing wheels, you know. And for a long time, I had to rent roller skates when I went to the roller rink. And finally, I asked for them as a gift, and I got them for like my birthday or Christmas, okay? And they were the real deal. Finally, you know what I mean? I got the, they had the gear thing wheels. Those were like my pride and joy for like five years. <laughs> and I got the big old purple pom pom on the front. Oh, I, I was styling, dude. Ah, uh, yeah. I was in the big time then. No, uh, I, I remember the I remember uh, the the roller yeah. skates from from they had in my day. I, hadn't, I I never used them because well, I didn't have any reason to be roller they skating. They were the ones that went on your shoe. Yeah, like, they go. They, they strap over yep, your shoe, yep. and they, and they were steel wheels. That's what I started on. We yeah. had those. I'm not. You're only seven years older than me. We had the. We had, a little, we had, we had that. We had that. We had that. We were little kids, and they were. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, they had that, that little key to tighten them down. <laughs> yep, those things are fucking dangerous. Because <laughs> you're if you don't got them on your shoe just right, they fucking fall off. Here you are rolling along. You pick up your foot just wrong, and the fucking skate falls off, and you fucking go flying. <laughs> Yeah, well, I I remember I got I got a bicycle. I was like, ten, right. oh yeah, I ten, loved it. Ten years old, bike. ten years old, something like that. Right, right. Yeah, I got a bicycle, and, and that was it. I was gone. I was out of there. So I, that, I, 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 I was, had a bike when I first got a bike. Like we had to use my like parents' like old bikes. I did get a like a really nice banana seat bike, you know, and I was like old enough to ride a bike, like five years old or something. Yeah. You know, and I mean that was different because you weren't like independent then. But as soon as I got that 10 speed, I was gone. <laughs> yeah, yeah, me too. But all right, I, I can go places now. Freedom! <laughs> Freedom! And, I, and they got me one. It was it was uh, uh, Royce Royce Union was the brand, and, and I thought, well, that's that. It must be like top top class, top of the line. I didn't realize it was like a J.C. Penny brand or something. <laughs> <laughs> it was a piece of junk. I didn't really care. It got me everywhere I wanted to go. And it was purple. <laughs> Ooh, purple. My favorite color. I know. Yeah, uh, you know, pink and purple were, like, I remember I had this picture of me on the bike, with my first bike, and I was, it has training wheels on it. I was, like, probably four or five years old. You know, somewhere in there. And I was happy. I, I'm grinning. I'm just beaming. <laughs> that I'm just beaming. Like it's like, oh, <laughs> they they score. My parents score with that gift that year. Yeah. I think they well, they I think they had to do it big because that's my I'm four years older than my brother. Oh, okay. So like they had to like you know, oh yeah. By the way, you're having a we're having a ba You're gonna have a brother. <laughs> All right. <laughs> no, but whatever. It was fine. I love my brother. He's fine. But anyway, um, no, a bike was freedom, and the 
roller skating thing was the thing to do back in the day that your parents would allow you to do. You know, and you'd go there and you'd try to, you know, everyone, it was all, it was the pre, it was the pre, you know, it was like 13, 14, 15, 16, all the way up to 18 years old, you know, the whole teen age group, you know. Those were the times, though, dude. Those were some fun fucking times, score skating. <laughs> that yeah. was freedom, too. Anytime you could get out of your fucking house. Sure, sure. You know, and go and be with your friends. <laughs> you know, it was a good time. <laughs> you know? Oh, God. Yeah. You never went roller skating? No, I never that did. That wasn't a thing? Uh, I never did. I didn't do skateboards, either. You didn't get into it? No. Did you? Oh. I just, Either yeah. one, skateboard, or... I would think you for a skateboarding kid. I would have thought you would have been a well, skateboarding kid. Uh, I, 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 used, I, I had one. Somebody gave me one. But I, I never really You're figured it out. I, never, though, right? I, 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 I could never figure it out. I was no good. Um, See, I'm never good at skateboarding, but you surfed, though, didn't you? Just, you bo surfing? just body surfing. Just body surfing. Okay, and, well, and, and, that's better than nothing. And boogie boarding. <laughs> I, did, I did some boogie boarding. Well, there you go. Oh, well, there you go. But, but I, I tried to do the stand-up surfing, but that didn't work oh, out too. Yeah, either. but the skateboarding, dude, that did not work for me at all. I can't <laughs> do it. I can't. Yeah. I'm always inept. Uh, another thing I couldn't I do. Skate. Uh, no, uh, not skating. Another, another, another thing I couldn't do was ice skating. Oh, really? oh uh, we did that. But I was. I had uh, my my, See, uh, my body's not designed for that kind of action. <laughs> right. Like I would have been a badass female hockey player. That's all I'm saying. Like, girls' hockey was available to me, or my kids, my dad, parents threw me in a fucking boys' hockey. Because even today, the, the girls start playing with the boys. They just mix them all together until they get to a certain age, right? Yeah. So anyway, I would have been a kick-ass fucking female hockey player. But I had, you know, I got figure skates, you know. Uh. I grew up watching, like, Dorothy Hamill and shit, you know, and I thought that I wanted figure skates. But I wasn't going to be no fucking figure skater. You know what I mean? But uh, okay, but you'd be the uh, the roller derby roller derby queen. I, yeah, I would have been better off with uh, hockey skates, and then yes, I would have been I would have could have been a roller derby queen, but I am too old for that now. Uh, well, I'm sure they have a uh, they have an older older <laughs> old, older gals. I probably could have done it, but you know what? Now, no. I yeah. <laughs> the body no. takes a little. The body no. takes a little too long to heal. <laughs> it's like they make it like elderly teeth. <laughs> you know, it's like they have with other elderly teeth. Yeah, you know well, I mean? yeah. Well, those are the ones we got all, all full padding, and you don't really hit each other. <laughs> right. They'll be having a walker. They'll be on roller skates, but they'll also have a walker that's on wheels too. <laughs> No, that wouldn't be good. Uh, no, no. I, no. I decided I'm too old for water skiing, downhill skiing, and roller derby. And zip lining, apparently. Apparently. <laughs> they had a horrific ordeal that I went through. The oh, one God. and only time I went zip lining, yes, I don't think I'll be doing that again. No repeats. Got that one checked off my bucket list already. Zip there you lining. go. All right, let's hit some tunes here. We'll come back and talk about more stuff. All right, hey. thanks for joining us, everybody. It's Freaky Friday, people. Get your freak on. That's right, and get your surf on with them aliens. <laughs> Ah, <laughs> oh, see, stick, Steve. I'm telling you, man, that's some serious dog-ass boogie right there. Uh, love it, love it, love it, love it. Uh, before that, the Guess Who with a clap for the Wolfman, and we kicked it off with Joe Satriani surfing with the alien. Yep, -er, pepper, that's some rock and roll there, rock and blues, rock and good stuff for everybody. So, yeah. <laughs> oh, am I on here? Did yeah, I... so yeah, yeah, I'm on. Schwins aren't good anymore. Schwins? Schwin bikes. I don't know. I, got, I, have, I have a Schwin, uh, what do you call it? Uh, 
resect one of those exercise bikes. What do you call it? Re uh, re 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 uh, yeah, that thing. Oh. I, I have that. <laughs> okay. It's those a swing. Cool. Re those are cool, Graham. I know a friend of mine that rides one of those all around the place. You can't he ride this. Them, you like, can't, you can't, recumbent. Recumbent. You can't ride this. It it just sits there in your living room and you get out oh, there. Oh, I and, thought you were talking about recumbent bicycle. I don't know what they call it. They got a name for it. Okay. Do you know what a recumbent bicycle is? I, I thought that's what it was. I thought that's what they call this. You kind of no, no. I'll look it up. You kind of kick back on it and and it. And you actually ride these things though. Oh, you know, like, this, see, this he he had a stroke or whatever, and he can't use his arms. So the only way he can ride bike is to use a recumbent bicycle. And oh. um, I'll just look up the Amazon link here. Oh. But he actually puts miles on this thing. I mean, he oh. freaking, he rides out, this is how he gets, he has a car, but this is basically his way of bike riding, since he can't ride a regular bike. Oh. He rides this thing. He's a really cool dude. He's awesome. He's great. Alright, alright. Well, so I... he does, and this is how he, this is his exercise, basically. I mean, he's obviously a biker, you know, a bicyclist. I, I, I put, mean, I put, I, I put, I put miles. It, I... If you're, if you're into biking, this is what you do if you can't ride a regular bike. You know? I put miles on mine, like... but it doesn't go anywhere. Yeah, I mean, he wears a helmet <laughs> and everything. I mean, no, but these are, this is what he puts miles on his, his recumbent, it's called. But anyway, yeah, I, I grew up on Schwinn's, and now I find out they're made in China. It's like, okay, well, then all I have to get, like, an expensive U.S. bike, like, a specialized, or even more expensive, like a truck. Right. Truck are from Wisconsin. They're made in Wisconsin. I mean, I, I like to know things about my state, and I do know that Trek is made in Wisconsin, and I do know that Holland Lindsay paint is also made in Wisconsin. So if I'm ever going to paint again my house, I'm not going to go to Menards. I'm going to go to Holman Lindsay and get my paint there. But it's really good paint. And it's made in Wisconsin. Okay. So you have to kind of support your local, you know, your local folks. <laughs> uh, okay. What's going on here? That's how I feel. I don't know. I mean, if it's a good product, it's a good product. You know, and I, I stand by these products. It's not like I'm just standing by them because they're made in Wisconsin or whatever. I'm standing by them because they're awesome products, you know. Right. And also, if you did not know this, Speed Clean washing machines are also from Wisconsin. <laughs> and when you go to a laundromat, most of the time, it used to be back in the day, that every laundromat had Speed Clean. Okay. Okay. Now it might be different. There might be maintained runner mat machines. I don't know, but Speed Queen is the original laundry mat machine, and that is the machine I am going to get next time I purchase the washing machine if I can. Right. Because I have a Maytag right now, and I'm sorry, but it fucking sucks. I hate it. It's the worst washing machine I've ever used in my life, and it wasn't cheap. It was five hundred bucks, brand new. Right. Oh, okay. The thing fucking eats my clothes. Okay. It eats my clothes, dude. And beside that, I'm looking at this, I just pulled up Speed Queen, and it says these are built to last 25 fucking years. Speed Queen. There's only certain stores in this town that sell Speed Queen. But next time I get a washing machine, it will be that. It will be a speed queen. But, so what I'm saying is, like, I had a front loader, right? Right. And it was great. I liked it. Except for the fact that the rubber fucking gasket around, like, the door and everything, where it seals when you shut the door, it's a pretty big rubber gasket. That thing got moldy. And then in the inside, there's a, a piece, like, of the gasket part, too. It got moldy and fucked up, and I couldn't get rid of it. I couldn't clean it. So the only thing to do is to replace it, which I still have this machine, right? So what I should do is I should go back to that one, sell the Maytag, and just replace the fucking rubber parts on the, the one that I have, right? 
Okay. But besides that, it got moldy, like, in the, you know, in the, what do they call it, the tub part of it, like, inside where you can't see that part. The only way to clean that is to take the back panel off the machine and actually clean it out. You know what I mean? Sure. But you can use vinegar in your machine, I've learned. If you run, like, if I think my machine's starting to stink a little bit, I'll just be like, okay, I got to do, I got to clean it. You know what I mean? Right. So I'll run just a load with, like, a couple towels in there on hot, and I'll put only freaking vinegar in there. Okay. I'll just dump vinegar in there, and that usually takes care of the problem. Bleach doesn't work. Bleach doesn't work for cleaning these machines. I found out. I'm just saying, I know this sounds dumb, but, you know, you spend a lot of money on a machine, and then all of a sudden, you know, something's wrong with it, like it needs a new rubber gasket because I can't get that, you know, crap off there, the mold or whatever. It's basically, it's mold that's on there. You know? Right. And I try to combat it by leaving the door open and everything, you know, but it's still, um, got that way. So then I thought, oh, I'll go buy a Maytag, right? Because they're supposed to be really good, right? Yeah. No, this thing is not good. It, it, it's so powerful. Like, they have a fucking, what do they call it? It's, it's, um, you know, the thing that takes water out. A bucket? <laughs> no, it's fucking, it's something automatic. X, X something. A siphon? No, I can't think of the word right now. Okay. But anyway, it has this feature on there. Where, yeah, extractor. Thank you, Ben. It has an extractor on there. It's, it doesn't have the middle spindle thing, but it's got the bottom part, and it, when it's done washing the clothes... It extracts the water out, and so that that bottom part like spins, over, you know, goes back and forth a little bit to get the water out. This is the part where I think it's eating the clothes. Yeah. It's doing it too much. You know what I mean? Okay. And so, I mean, seriously, I've had washing machines different throughout the since the kids have been born. I've probably had five different washing machines. This one is the worst one I've had. It's the first one that's ever like made my towels free. You know what I mean? And I'm not using the heavy setting. I'm using, like, the light setting, you know? Sure. It's like, I'm going to call something. I'm seriously going to do this. I'm going to call Meg Tag out, and I'm going to tell him about my story. And I'm going to tell him, this is a shitty product. Not that I expect him to do anything about it, or that I'm going to get my money back, because I've had this thing, like, two years, right? Three years. Right. But ever since I've had it, I've hated it. And I've, like, regretted the, the decision to buy it, you know? Okay. But it's like, you, you shouldn't make a product. It, it, this is my, my point, I guess, I'm coming to, is that they try to make it too good, and it, they went overboard. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, I'm, ser I'm sorry, but clothes are expensive. Towels are expensive. I can't go out and buy towels every six months or something. You know what I mean? Right. It's like, if my towels are going to start fraying and everything, this is a faulty product. And there's not, like, a different setting? Or... Well, yeah, I, I use the light setting on normal. There's a bunch of different settings on there, right? Yeah. But like, when I wash my, like, delicate stuff, I use the, the hand wash setting. There's a hand wash setting. You can't use the hand wash setting for towels. You gotta get the fucking towel, you know what I mean? The normal setting for towels should be good. It should not fuck your clothes up or, or fuck up your, your towels. It shouldn't make them fray. You know what I mean? Right. And I noticed this. Like, I had this machine probably do... Okay, so this is, the, this is the deal. I got it at Menards, right? And at Menards, if you buy an appliance at Menards, you have seven days to return it. Seven days? You know what? Which is bullshit. Because you know what? I didn't realize this issue until I had it over seven days. I had it like two weeks, and I started noticing my clothes are getting fucked up, right? Yeah, you know, you should have you went to Costco. Right. Well, I didn't. And so I call up Menards, and then I find out, and maybe I wasn't listening, but they said, oh, the seven-day return time is over, so you have to go to the manufacturer. And I'm like thinking to myself, oh, maintain. 
what the fuck are they gonna do for me? <laughs> well, they're just you know sitting I mean? around waiting for somebody to call. So I didn't even fucking call Maytag. <laughs> I'm like, fuck, I'm stuck with this now. You know? The, 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 those Maytag guys, they're just sitting around waiting for somebody to call. I, no, I, I've seen the, the commercial. It's not even the Maytag repairman's fault. It doesn't need to be repaired. The, the product is faulty because it makes your clo- it fucks up your clothes. You know what I mean? And to me, that's bullshit because I'm a single parent. I don't have money or time to go buy fucking new towels every six months or new clothes. I mean, seriously. Some of my kids, like, some of the jeans that we had just, like, rip inexplicably. It's like, okay, that's from the machine. You know, my, I have never have clothes, like, hap- this things happen to clothes. So I know it's the machine, right? I'm thinking, well, maybe it's not the machine. No, it's the machine. Right. You know, and it's like, fuck. Yeah, well, I got mine. I don't know. A... I think you know. I'm gonna pot, I'm gonna sell it for like two hundred and fifty bucks. Try to sell it to someone that doesn't know better. I mean, I hate Wait, to say hey, that, damn, that's, like, not, hey, that, that's not that's not cool. Not tell them that it destroys clothes. <laughs> <laughs> that's me. No, I'm not gonna do that. I can't do that to somebody. You know what I mean? <laughs> I have to t- I have to disclose that information. <laughs> <laughs> Say, I'm too, I'm too honest. I can't be like, here, have this machine. It's great. See, I, I, bought, I bought when I bought mine. <laughs> when I bought mine when I moved in here. I got like you know whatever the most basic model was. It's got right. like three settings on it. I, right. I don't even know what they are, but, you know, it's like right. colored, white, and something yeah, else. Yeah, you don't need more than that, the, right. And, and, the, and the, then the, the, the water, you know, temperature thing, hot, hot warm, and cold. Uh, that's, that's all there is. There's no other thing to set on it. I it, didn't know how, I didn't know that it was seven <laughs> days, and then once seven days is done, you can't go to Menards. you got to go to the manufacturer. Yeah, that's there you go. Kate's bullshit. got the idea. Okay, call call them up. Maybe they got a recall on it. I will. I'm gonna call them, Kate. I need. I should have called them two years ago. You know, but it's like I feel like you know a small fish in a big pond. <laughs> like you know, main thing. They're like fucking huge. You know, turn, like Ben, turn the dial to speed queen. What the hell is that? I'm gonna. T- I am gonna tell them that you know what. I, I'm not getting a main thing ever again. And I am gonna buy the next machine I buy will be a speed queen. Where I know they're reliable and it's a state, they, they, they've never changed the design. They keep making them the same way they've always made them. And they're still in business, so they're doing something right. You know, Maytag tries to get off fancy. Like you say, Graham, they put all these different settings on here now, and it's all electronic, too. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's not like turn the knob. Well, you know what I mean? You push a button. Oh, or you, yeah. There's a knob on there, but you got to push the button to start it and everything. It's just like really, you guys are getting a little bit too fancy for me here. Yeah, ain't that ain't need no. nothing. No, no, uh, no. Oh, that. we need to have toasters that talk to you and fucking no. dishwashers <laughs> that talk to you and refrigerator. It's like really, you people are fucking insane. I don't need none of that. I don't need, you don't any. need none of this shit. It's like we're being bombarded <laughs> with this crap. Oh, you gotta have Alexa in your home. You know what? It would drive me fucking crazy to have one of them things in my fucking house. I'd be like, shut the fuck up. I'd be throwing that thing out the fucking window in the first day. You know, do you want me to do this for you? Blah, blah, blah. It's like, no. Fuck you. I don't want the NSA spying on me any more than they already are. Thank you. All right. Well, here's, here's, a, here's a story about Wisconsin. Okay. <laughs> Great. Just to move on. Um, <laughs> That's fine. Slenderman movie opens in central Wisconsin. Oh, oh God. Draws criticism. Oh, really? You now, think? Now, 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 here's... This article comes out of Rothschild, Wisconsin. <laughs> okay, Ro- I don't know what that is. Rothschild. It's like, oh, it's wow. It's there by uh, Yeah, yeah. Anyway, it says, a horror movie based on the fictional character Slenderman hit the big screen... And the showing is drawing controversy. In 2014, two 12-year-old Wisconsin girls stabbed a classmate 19 times and left her for dead in the right. woods. They claimed it was to please a Slender Man. Both girls were sentenced to mental hospitals. 
While the movie is not based on the incident in Waukesha, it's drawn criticism from some who think the movie is in poor taste. <laughs> Here's a quote from a guy. He says, okay. says, I think it's terrible. When you take a tragedy and try and turn it into money, in, into a movie to make money out of, I think it's sad. Very sad thing, said moviegoer Merle Freud. <laughs> 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 he's there watching the movie, and he comes out and says all this. <laughs> That's the greatest part of the story, the guy can see. Hilarious. Anyway, Marcus, theaters, Mar Marcus, uh, Marcus Theaters decided not to air the movie in several Wisconsin locations. Close, I would hope so. Close to where the stabbing was happened. Was happened. Was so. happened. Happened. Uh, but moviegoers in central Wisconsin had the chance to see it on the big screen at oh theaters in Rothschild, uh, Wisconsin Rapids, Stevens Point, Marshfield, and Rhinelander. People heading to see the movie at the Marcus Cedar Creek Cinema in Rothschild said they don't see a problem with the idea of a Slender Man movie. And it's bound to happen eventually. I wouldn't say it was in poor taste or anything. Uh, they were. Like they, 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 they weren't right? trying. No, it's just, it was. It's just. A, it's a fictional movie. It's got nothing to do oh. with those those girls. Okay. Um, they shouldn't have made the movie. I, that's just. I mean, <laughs> I get it. I don't care that they made it. Yeah, but like, the, well, like 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 that that person said, it's, it was going to happen eventually. Somebody's going to make the keep movie. Keep it going. What? Don't keep the Slender Man myth going. It's it's a myth. It's fucking bullshit. Yeah, but it's a it story. Died. People are interested. The twelve year old girl stabbed her other twelve year old girl. That's when the Slender Man thing should have fucking been dead. <laughs> yeah. Right there. No, well, that's when I, it be, that, that's when it became a legend. That's, right, exactly. I mean, Pretty it much. may have been a, a thing on the internet before that. Nobody ever heard of it. Except exactly. for the people that went to that one specific site, apparently exactly. these, these two girls did. Yep. And um, after that, everybody knew about it, and so it, it had to yep. be it had to become a movie. I guess so, but you whatever. Know. They were mentally ill. Well, the one for sure. Well, they, they apparently they're were locked up for for thirty years. Yeah, well, they're both in the loony bin, so. Yeah, they are. That's where they should be. I'm sorry to say, but some people are just fucking crazy from the get-go. They're fucked up. For whatever reason. Could be anything. You don't know. All right. Uh, now, are you familiar with something called HGTV? Yes. All right. Well, I, guess... I don't watch it. No, I, I don't watch it. No, I, I don't watch fucking TV. I don't okay, watch TV. well, whatever. Apparently that that line. that Sorry. company HGTV just bought the yeah, house. Well, they just bought the house from the Brady Bunch. They did. Yeah, they did. Oh man! <laughs> so they're says they're about to film the nostalgic home makeover show oh. ever. Most of the the networks just snapped oh up the house featured on the beloved TV sitcom. The I saw Brady it was Bunch. On sale a couple weeks ago, like three weeks ago. Yeah, yeah, they, it was on sale, right? Says it's unclear whether with what the network will do with the house, but the network executive promised they will restore the home back to its Brady family roots. So um, apparently they're owned by Discovery, and they confirm the purchase. Blah blah blah. Uh, da, da, whatever. So they're going to make it look like it did in the set on on the, on the TV show. But um, even though it wasn't filmed, I read the article when it came out when they said it was on the market. I read the article and it said they only filmed that house from the outside. The rest of it was filmed in California in a studio. Right. Well, what do you bet they yeah. they make it look like that on the inside? Right. They make it. Well, they're going to. We know they're going to. Sure. So. But you know. I'm just saying. Um, anyway, if you if you were if yeah. you were in the market for the Brady house, give it up. It's sold. <laughs> it was like over a million dollars. It was like a million dollars. Uh, they paid. What did it say? I think they didn't. They put a price in here. Um, Maybe not quite a million. Oh no, they said that there's no price here. Okay. Oh, okay. Anyway, they whatever they bought it, don't matter. Well, okay, <laughs> so I saw this shortly before we the figures ball started, and um, I'm just like, okay, so I just saw this, all right, people. But I'm going to talk about it because this could be this is kind of interesting to me. And I've always been talking about this on the Freakers Ball for a long time, and that's Roundup. 
Right. Oh, three point five million, Kate said. Oh. Oh my God! I thought that was like a million. What? That's insane. That is crazy. <laughs> well, it's in California, so all houses out there. Right. Expensive. Yeah. Holy crap. But anyway, I saw this story shortly before Figures Ball started, and apparently the school groundsman, 46 years old, with only weeks left to live, is awarded $289 million by a jury that found Wheat Killer Roundup did give him lymphoma. Yeah. And said the cash will support his wife, who works two jobs and children when he dies. It says re uh, Roundup does cause cancer. A jury has declared this in an unprecedented Precedented trial into the health dangers of Monsanto's weed killer. After three days of deliberations, jurors on Friday cited the terminally ill groundsman Dwayne Johnson, 46, who has just weeks to live, ordering him 250 million in punitive damages, plus nearly 40 million in compensatory, comp, compensatory, compensatory <laughs> damages, bringing the total to 280, 289 million. Good. Well, anyway, there you go. This great. No, that's great. I, and, and I and I came across this here article today talking about pesticides and other stuff. Okay. Um, which apparently it's a good thing. I'm not really familiar with this particular product, but uh, the court the court has ordered the EPA, which seems like. Whatever. Anyway, the, the court orders the EPA to remove a harmful pesticide from the United States market. Good. No justification for EPA's decision to allow continued use of chloropyrifos. Good. It sounds nasty. Whatever it's, it is. C H L O R P Y R I F O S. Chloropyrifos. That's um, good. So apparently, the Federal Appeals Court ruled yesterday that the Trump administration endangered public health by keeping the widely used pesticide chloropyrifos on the market despite extensive extensive scientific evidence that even tiny levels of exposure can harm babies brains babies brains yep the ninth US circuit court of appeals in San Francisco ordered the EPA to remove that that drug or, or that poison from sale in the United States within 60 days uh, the Coalition of Farm Workers and Environmental Groups sued last year after the EPA chief Scott Pruitt reversed an Obama era effort to ban that that poison, uh, which is widely sprayed on citrus fruits, citrus fruits, apples, and crops. So you don't have to worry about that being on your apples anymore. Um, well, good. It's one less thing to worry about. They'll probably replace it with something else. Oh yeah, something else just as nasty. Um, right. <laughs> The Attorney General for several states uh, joined in the case against the EPA, including California, New York, and Massachusetts. So, uh, anyway, whatever. It, it's, it's, a, it's a poison that they've been sprayed on your food, and um, it's one less poison. Now, they spray a cocktail of poisons on your food. Yep, right. It's not just one thing. That's how they, they mental masturbate us into thinking, oh, we did something good, and we took a fucking, uh, fucking pesticide off the market. Oh, yeah, but we're, we're leaving the rest of the shit on there. Uh, like mental masturbation. It, it, it's, it's the way they get you. You know, they, it's, it's psychological warfare, you think about it. you got to think about it that way. If you don't, you're freaking, you're, you're in their trap. It's psychological fucking warfare. It's not just direct. They're not going to come up to you and punch you in the fucking face. They're going to fucking mentally masturbate you in the fucking thinking and all these other things. These lies. Yeah. You know? Right. I mean, I, it, it's just ridiculous. It's, it is you ridiculous. Can't, you can't buy into it. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, there's that. So, uh... uh Gooberzilla posted a, a, a link to a picture, uh, it's, it's called a bikini pinup of Jan Brady. Not, oh, God. I, oh, great. Not, I can't not, wait to see this. No, it's just not, I, I just, I'm not, I don't, I don't I know mean, who, I, 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 I think you're stuck on the video. No, my computer's probably fucked up. But I'm not playing the 
Uh, oh, sometimes, here. sometimes you got to refresh on Vaughn, but no. Yeah, it's I got to refresh. Time. Okay, anyway. Uh, but anyway, I, I look at it. Jan Brady is like, really? Who, who pinned her up? <laughs> She was I a mean, pretty mulchy looking girl. I'm sure she was a nice girl and all, but yeah, you know. <laughs> anyway, let's hear some more music. Uh, okay. Uh, 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 here in uh, we got the uh, what, what, what do we got? Oh yeah, that's right. Okay. Uh, <laughs> yeah. All right. Here we go with um, some whiskey in the jar. Oh yeah. Here we go, baby. Oh, yeah, there you go. The infamous string dusters covering Jessica. Very nice job there. Back from uh, last year, from April April of last year. Before that, we had Stevie Ray Vaughan and uh, Double Trouble doing Love Struck Baby and kicked it off with The Grateful Dead and Whiskey in the Jaw. Actually, that was Bobby and Jerry, wasn't it? It says Grateful Dead on the video. Oh, really? Tell me different. Okay. Tell me different. I believe you because you're the dead fan. So I don't think it was just, it was the dad. It was like Bobby and Jerry or something because right. they had a picture of Bobby and Jerry on there. I don't think it was the dead. It might have been, but I don't think. So. Uh, okay. <laughs> just say it. All right. Well, like I said, you tell me it was. I believe you. Um, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know enough about, about, about enough about them to. Say any different. So. All right then. All right then. Oh, shit, I'm not, even, I'm not even on. What the hell is going on here? What? I'm losing my mind. What are you talking about? I'm losing my fucking mind. <laughs> okay, well we know that. <laughs> I'm losing my fucking mind, dude. It's just like so stressful. So did I tell you Matt bought a vehicle this week, last week? Uh, you told me he was gonna, or he was looking at one. He or... did. He bought a Suburban. Okay. Oh, that's right. You did tell Cold me, and I was asking Suburban. you. Uh, I'm on the wrong channel. What the hell? I want to go to our own home. Okay. Clicked it. There we go. All right. Anyway, he bought a Suburban. It's an 04, and supposedly it was an Arizona vehicle. Which is good because they don't use a lot of rust repellent down in Arizona like they do in Wisconsin, right? They don't use any. <laughs> no, because they don't need to. Because it doesn't get as cold there as it does here in Wisconsin. <laughs> yeah, they're not they're not out salting the roads in Arizona. No. But up in Wisconsin, if we didn't salt the roads up here, and I talked about this last winter, but if we did not do that, there would be so many fucking accidents, dude. Well, yeah, but... People would be dying left and right from accidents. It would be not pretty. I mean, it already happens now when they still they do treat the roads. Because you never can trust the road in the winter up here. You never know. It's just so scary, dude. It, it, it's it's like a death wish driving up here in the winter. Yeah. I mean, you know, we got deer that can pop out. Then you got black ice you can't see. All of a sudden, you can hit a patch of that, and there's be a deer in front of you, you fucking tap the brake, you fucking spin out. You're done. You know? You never know. never know. But anyway, he bought the Suburban, and I agree, I, I don't mind it, because, yes, their dad can help him work on the vehicle. You know what I mean? Mm hmm There's very little rust on it. It's an 04, but they're good vehicles. You know what I mean? They got the Chevy 350 engine in there. You know? Yeah. Yeah, he wanted a Suburban. He didn't want no other vehicle. Like, I found this really cool, super cool. Like, I wanted this vehicle, a Chevy Tahoe. And the thing was, like, an old guy owned it. And it's like, dude, that's an awesome vehicle right there. You know? <laughs> but he didn't want that. He wanted a Suburban, a Suburban. So they had to drive, like, an hour and a half away to go get it. Right. So, anyway, um, he has it now, and it actually fits in the garage. Um, so we have three vehicles here now. Cool. <laughs> this is crazy. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, well, there's three people that draw, all drive, so, you know. Right. I mean, you got I mean, because Matt's been kind of bumming because he hasn't had a vehicle, so he hasn't been able to fucking, you know, be mobile at all, really, you know. Yeah, yeah. He's been able to take the edge a couple of times, but Zach's working, so Zach takes the edge, you know. Yeah. Yeah, so Matt needs a car, a vehicle, but it's a gas, they're, they got big gas tanks in them, I mean. Well, you better a, have a big gas tank if you want to drive yeah. anywhere, it's a, it's, a, it's a thing, yeah. Big vehicle, dude. Alright, so I don't know what the deal here is on this, Kate posted this uh, tweet from uh, Matt Helder. Okay. Uh, apparently, it, look, it sounds like somebody stole an airplane from Seattle, from SeaTac. What? Stole an airplane, and then the, the the military was chasing it with an F-15. What? So it says, wow, sonic booms over South Sound from F-15 intercept of the plane stolen from SeaTac and wow. or other combat air patrol over JBLM, whatever that is. Wow. And uh, some guy responded, said he... He's a reporter from uh, Fox 40 in Sacramento looking for info on this developing story. So I, I don't know. How, I guess he just walk up to a plane and, and fly it away. Uh, I, <laughs> That's weird. <laughs> okay, you okay. Know how to fly a wait, plane, wait, though. wait, wait. She's got it. You got should it. know how to fly a plane before getting into a plane and attempting to fly it. Wait, she, she's got another picture here. Some dude stole a plane from SeaTac, allegedly. Did a loop to loop, almost crashed into Chambers Bay, then crossed in front of our party, cr chased by fighter jets, and subsequently crashed. Weird times. <laughs> so he went for a joyride in a plane and was. I heard about this on the news. They were talking about this, and the guy had no training whatsoever. He said he could just jump into a plane and fly a fucking plane. Well, apparently he did but a loop to loop. He actually and... got it off the ground. I mean, uh, 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 like I said, apparently he did a loop to loop. That's not easy. No, he must have. He must be a pilot. He must have known how to do it. But but it said he, he wouldn't just do that. But it said after the fight, after the fighter jets were chasing him, he did crash. So. <laughs> wow. Okay. Yeah. All right. Cool. Thanks, Kate. Um. <laughs> well, we, yeah, that was. I heard that on the news this morning. They were talking about the national radio station that I listen to sometimes. It's on. I should say, I it, but uh, they were saying the guy like a couple of days ago. A guy jumped in the plane, took off. You know, and then when they caught on to him, they you know like they well, said this, they I mean, I mean the, the, the news here, I mean, it's just like minutes ago, so it sounds like it's more recent. Oh, this was recent? I thought, that, no, there was a story, a similar story. Maybe it, was, it, maybe it was the same story and it just didn't get out until now? I, I don't know. That could be. I, I, I have no idea. Just seeing what I'm reading in these little tweets here. All right, um, oh, as as we're doing this next bit here, I'm going to post you a link there in the chat and, and for... Uh, those of you that uh, are fans of freedom, <laughs> you'd think that'd be everybody, right? You would, you would think. But apparently it's not. Anyway, this uh, Rob Rob Works posted this link earlier, and it's from Tolfa, the Online Freedom Academy, and it says, like freedom itself, Tolfa is for everybody, but not necessarily right now. This page is meant to save you the work and frustration if this is not the best immediate opportunity for you. A friend, your mentor, recently suggested you take this course, so he thought that now probably is the, the best time, but here you can make sure. If it's not, don't give up. Just postpone participation and be sure to talk it over with that friend. Here is the entrance examination. The questions and answers will not say you're right or you're wrong, just whether you're ready or not. Whether working on the rest of TOFA will be time well spent at once or later on. Please settle some, somewhere quiet and click on your best fit response to each question. Uh, when all done, hit enter, enter the, uh, the hit enter and the TOEFL will respond and score indicate whether you should proceed at once. Several of us here in the chat earlier today took this test 
and uh, I'm going to give you the link to it here. <laughs> it's, a, it's only 11 questions on it. Okay. Um, uh, but, you know, it just, it just kind of... Oh, it just happened, Pete said. That thing, so there was a similar thing where some guy, and I'll have to look it up, but some guy did a, jumped in the plane, and, he, could, and he did actually get off the ground, but it's a little different story. So that's interesting, Kate. Thank you. I just want to clarify, it's a different story. Yeah. All right. Because it just happened. Wow. Just, so, just happened. so lots of people just stealing planes now. <laughs> I guess so. I mean, people jump in. This is crazy. What, what the hell? So anyway, peeps, just uh, go ahead and take that test and uh, let us know in the chat what your... Okay, what, yeah. What, like, okay, I'll click on it. Well, what, what, your, what your score was. I think that's the fucking break or whatever. But. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whatever. That's cool. So um, 11 questions. Okay, is, are they hard questions? Like, are they, like, in-depth stuff? Like no, no. Questions? It's basic stuff that you, I mean, you just, whatever, whatever, you know, whatever strikes your fancy there. Um, okay. Uh, on the answers and, and uh, whatever works, whatever you believe to be the right answer. All right. So there's no wrong answer. There's no wrong answer. And okay. none of them are like, well, none it's of these. It's one of those kind of tests. <laughs> it's not like none of these are good answers, because there's a good answer for each one. Um, right. <laughs> so, uh, whatever. Um, okay, cool. Interesting. Now, I now, will do that. Now, were you ever a fan of the Star Trek The Next Generation? Well... A little bit. Okay, well, you know uh, who... I didn't, like, watch them religiously or anything. But, but you know who Captain Picard was? Yes. Bald-headed yes. dude. Yep. Anthony... Yeah. Sir Patrick Stewart. Stewart. Sir, yeah, Patrick Stewart. Yep, Okay. Yep. Well, apparently, according to ArsTechnica.com, Sir Patrick Stewart to reprise Picard role in a new <laughs> Star Trek series. Really? Yeah, okay. and the news comes from the official Trek convention in Vegas... And it's going to be on something called CBS All Access Exclusive. Ooh, the truck convention. Woohoo! CBS All Access Exclusive, which means I guess it's not on TV. I don't know. Or or, or maybe that's a TV station. I, I don't know that either. Um, uh, it sounds like it's for a CBS, like an offshoot but channel. Not, but not on CBS. On cable, probably. Probably. Anyway, so at this week, Las, weekend's Las Vegas Star Trek convention... Patrick Stewart took the show's keynote stage with a surprise announcement. Jean-Luc Picard is back. Stewart confirmed that he will return to his iconic role as in, in an as-yet-unnamed series, which, according to Deadline, will be a CBS All Access exclusive. The series' details are currently quite unconfirmed, with Stewart admitting to LVST, which I'm not sure what that is, oh, Las Vegas Star Trek Convention uh, crowd, that we have no scripts yet, and he is talking storylines with series handlers. But Patrick Stewart uh, and the rest of the Star Trek team are adamant in saying that this series will not be a Next Generation reboot, and that the Star Trek Convention events did not include additional Next Generation actors, confirming the involvement. He may not be captain anymore, Stewart says. On Saturday, he may be somewhere, uh, someone who has been changed by his experiences. It will be something very different, but it will come to you with the same passion. Now, Star Trek did another series, um, this well, recently. I don't know if it was this year or yeah, last year. And they had, like, one episode or something on TV, and then the rest you couldn't see because they were on something else. I don't know where they were. And it sounds like that's where this is going to wind up. Um, something that I won't be able to see until maybe they syndicate it or whatever. Which is a shame, because I'd watch it. <laughs> if it was on the normal you know, broadcast channels, but if it's not, then I can't see it. So, anyway, Trek heads, Trekkers, Trekkies, Trek nuts, <laughs> there you go, Sir Patrick Stewart. Oh boy. <laughs> you still there? Hello, 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 hello. Oh, I have it on mute. Sorry. <laughs> okay. 
Like, what the hell? You can't hear me? No, I'm talking here to myself about Star Trek and, uh, you know. Anyway. I mean, okay, a mountain lion was probably socking the cat inside the house. I mean, it's going to happen. Cats do what they do. Big well, cats do what they do. A mountain lion in Boulder? Really? Oh. <laughs> yeah, there's mountain lions all over Boulder. Or all over right. Colorado. I mean, in general. Yep. <laughs> Hey, don't live in Colorado if you want to have a cat. You know, I mean, I maybe mean, that's the model. Or, or unless you like, unless, unless you like feeding mountain lions live stock. And if you have a dog, <laughs> make sure it's a big fucking dog, or yeah. that mountain lion will take out your dog too. And they're just lucky that he didn't get a kid or, or the or the homeowner himself. Right, he got his the cat. cat. Said, all right, all right. That's that's what mountain lions do. That's their job. It's weird that, a, a, well, I suppose to a mountain lion, a domestic cat, like, you know. But, but I guess, yeah, you're my species, but I'm, I'm going to kill you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're not really my species. You're only a... I'm the big dog. You're, 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 you're only a wannabe. Cat. You're a wannabe. Right. <laughs> but, but since we're talking about Colorado, we might as well do this here. Might as well. More than 90% of Coloradans... Suspected of DUI had been drinking. Only six percent used marijuana. Aha! Uh -huh. <laughs> is Jay Dredd listening? I hope Jay Dredd is listening. Uh, I'm sure he is. I'm sure he is. So the vast majority of Coloradans suspected of driving under the influence in 2016 had been drinking, but only a small fraction had used marijuana, says uh -huh. a first of its kind study of DUI cases published by the State Division of Criminal Justice. But drug-related impairment likely is underrepresented in the data, the state news release says, due to the fact that alcohol is faster, easier, and cheaper to screen for than other drugs. Once alcohol is detected, agencies have enough evidence to reliably achieve conviction, Therefore, yep. agencies have not consistently spent the additional money and time to request blood testing for substances beyond alcohol. More than 91% right. of suspects who had a toxicologically screen, toxicology screen yep. done had alcohol in their systems, while only 6.2% had marijuana. So, uh, whatever. Yep. The yep. thing is, you, you all want to go after the say, oh, you terrible marijuana users. No, it's you terrible drinkers. Yes, but, it is. So, Alcohol is deadly. Don't be out there, don't be out there drinking and driving. It's not, it's not a smart thing to no, do. No, not good. Not a smart thing don't to do. do it. You right, know, you I know, agree. Wind up, you got to wind up getting in trouble over that. And so I did, I did, um, I googled stolen plane and it all comes up as a sea tech thing, but I'm looking further into the other story that I heard earlier this week. Alright. But anyway, yeah, okay. Oh, that's 2003. What the fuck? So I can't search it right now because of this new event. Right, yeah, that always screws things up. Yeah, oh, well, I'll figure it out, but um, interesting, very interesting. It, it, I seriously did hear about a story, and it wasn't from, like, my area. It was from like, California or something, where someone died, just jumped in a fucking plane, didn't even have a pilot's license or whatever, you know what I mean? Just, right, right. Like, really? <laughs> wow. Oh, boy. Wow. 91. Pretty good, Ben. Pretty good. You're a freedom-loving guy. All right. So I'm thinking I need another dog, and it's just so hard. Well, then you got to consider, you know, if you're going to be a traveling gal. I know, but I need a dog that can travel well with me, you know? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I know. I mean, but it's just like, oh, it's so hard, and I know there's so many dogs out there that need a home, but I'm just, it's got to be the right fucking dog. Yeah, be honest. That's all you can do is be honest on that thing, because you're, it's only about you and, and how you feel about freedom. 
I, I personally, I got a 99, but... Um, oh, I didn't do it yet. Well, you'll so do it. I you'll love... do it. Don't worry. Uh, you'll do it. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, this has been kind of a big story this week, a, a little, little bit of a big story. Um, it says, here are 410 movies made under the direct influence and supervision of the Pentagon. Kate got an 87. Very good. Anti, anti-COCON, anti got a 10. <laughs> wow. And he said he and he said he was going to try again and hope for a zero cuz he hates freedom. He he doesn't want anything to do with freedom. At least that's the that's the uh cloak he's wearing. <laughs> okay. I don't believe him to be to be that like that. Uh, he is to some degree but um you know, socialistic and such, but uh, I, I I do believe he's he's definitely putting on a a little bit of an act there. <laughs> okay. Anyway, so 410 movies made under the direct influence and supervision of the Pentagon, and some of them were were kind of surprising. Um, I, I don't know a lot of these movies that they talk about here, but you know, obvious ones like Air Force One. Um, you know, it's a it's a it's about you know the president and his plane and such like that. Um, other things like Apollo 13, obviously a big fiction there. But a movie like Armageddon, that seemed like maybe that could have not been a Pentagon movie, but apparently it was. Um, and I'm just in the A areas here, because it goes through, like I said, there's 400 of them. Black Hawk Down, obviously a Pentagon movie. Um I, I don't know which which other ones, but there was some in, in here that were kind of surprising. Uh, Day after tomorrow, of course, that's that you know fake one about where everybody dies because of global warming. <laughs> the day the Earth stood still. Now I, I I don't know if they're talking about the original or the new one or both, because I don't they they could have been involved in the original, but that would have been kind of odd to me if if they if they were involved in that. Um, but Ferris Bueller, Ferris Bueller, Bueller, Bueller. <laughs> well, Ernest Saves Christmas. The, what does that have to do with the Pentagon? I, I, I don't, I don't get it. Um, so, I don't. So, some, some of these, you like look at it and like, what, what kind of, what were they trying to push with Ernest Saves Christmas? I don't know. Don't know Godzilla. Now that, that's got to be the remake. That obviously not the original um, on that one. Um, uh, Hello Dolly. Is that a movie? I thought that was just like a stage thing. Uh, I guess there's a movie. I, I don't know. I am Legend. Um, I've seen it. Yeah. No, I know. Ice Station Zebras. Obviously, uh, you know that's a military movie. Um, Iron Man, all the Iron Mans, apparently. Fuck um, Iron Man movies. Fuck that. I hate the Marvel movies. They're fucking bullshit. Invaders from Mars. Indiana Jones in The Last Crusade. The, these are run by run by the uh, the, the Pentagon. The Manchurian yep. Candidate. I believe it. Uh, I don't. I don't know. All kinds of various movies. Um, the Net. Which was that one with Sandra Bullock? You remember that movie? Yes. Yeah. It's like how's that? How's that? How's that a thing? I don't know. The Perfect Storm. That was just a bunch of guys out out in the ocean. I don't have that anything to do with the military. Pet Cemetery. Stephen King's Pet Cemetery. I believe that. <laughs> I'm not sure why. Um, okay, I'm entering my responses. All right. All right. Ninety-eight. Ninety-eight. Awesome. Yeah. Ninety fucking eight, baby. Freedom loving gal. Silence of the Lambs. You know it. Uh, yeah, that's good. That's very good. Yeah. That's a freedom loving gal. Um, you Star know Trek. It. Star Trek Four. Star Trek Resurrection. Fuck Star Trek movies. That's just like the Marvel movies. Strike. No, I scored ninety eight, bitch. I just took the test. I scored ninety eight. The hardest question for me to answer was number ten. And that was what? Uh, let let's see here. here. Uh, 
your firstborn has just been delivered at the hospital, and the staff will ask you to sign a bunch of forms. You notice one of them requests a social security number to be assigned to your baby. Will you sign that one? Um, and I said on that one. I said no for the application of one she should make when she's on the side. That's, that's right. right. That's, I, that's, that's, I went to that, that one. That's the same one I picked. Yeah, yeah it's, it's up to that kid if they want a freaking number assigned to them. But they force you to do it in the hospital. They do don't they? let you leave. If you have a baby in the hospital, they will not let you leave unless you fill out that form. So I was but, but, stuck on that one. But that's I, not for a birth certificate, right? That's, it says a Social Security number. They make you fill that out in the hospital. Really? Yes, they fucking do. That's yeah. why I fucking quit. I was. I. That's the, the the most question I struggled on was number ten. Because there was, there's really my my answer really wasn't there. <laughs> okay. Yeah. The, at first I was like, yes. Before I'm far too exhausted to argue reason because that's what happened. I just filled it out. I wanted to get the fuck out of the hospital with my baby. You know what I mean? Sure, sure. I didn't know better. This was before I knew more. I know, I know. You know. And so the best one, though, is if, if, the, if the option was there, yes, no, but they don't let you say no, is my point, if you have it in a hospital. They don't let, do not let you say no to that. Now, now, Hansel, I didn't say that the Apollo missions were fiction. I said the movie was a fiction. <laughs> <laughs> the movie was a fiction uh, and they, they always say based upon a true story but they don't tell you how loosely based that is obviously right. there were Apollo missions <laughs> just like there were Mercury missions and there was more than one well uh, we're talking Apollo's in missions I'm talking about Apollo 13 there so um, yeah I like number 11 the best, though. Number 11, which was, you encounter, you encounter an, unfamiliar an unfamiliar viewpoint about a subject that interests you. By what process of thought will you evaluate it? Will you check what the authorities <laughs> say and reject the new viewpoint if it fails to conform? Will you see how the new ideas compare with others, think about them some more, decide for myself on my own reason? Which of them makes the most sense? Or I'll recognize that the latest opinions are always oh, the best. Yeah. Well, that's like the, that's like a super simple question. I mean, there's only yeah, one right right like, answer. It's like think for myself. That's what and, I would do. And yeah. and you yeah. know, I, I want I wonder you know who checks with the authorities and takes their viewpoint. Right. <laughs> they don't. You know, I mean, some people are like. Like, for me, if I jaywalk, I'm like, oh, I'm fucking jaywalking, bitch. <laughs> it's like, fuck you with jaywalking. Oh, what the fuck? It shouldn't even be a thing. It's just like the seatbelt thing. If someone wants to jaywalk, if the, if the people don't, the authorities don't think it's cool because it's kind of dangerous, it's like, fuck you. I'll look both ways before I cross the fucking street. Does it really matter where I cross the fucking street? Do I have to cross the street in your white fucking line? No, I fucking don't, bitch. No. I can cross the street. If there's no cars coming, I can cross the fucking street. You got, you there gotta, should be no law about where to cross the fucking street, goddammit. Uh, you you got to obey the law of the paint. Where? Why is there a law for where you cross the fucking street? The law oh, of the paint. these white lines painted here. You have to cross the street here in these white fucking lines. <laughs> Otherwise, you're a criminal. Fuck yeah. you, bitch. I'm a fucking person. Moving about how I want to in my own life. Right. You have no fucking... You you can't tell me what to do and what not to do. If I want to jump off a fucking bridge right now, I will fucking do it, bitch. You know what I mean? You don't well, have a right to tell me what to do and what not to fucking do with my own fucking person. Yeah, just try and avoid that jumping off the bridge thing. Well, I'm not going to, but... I'm just <laughs> But I'm saying, if I don't want to wear a fucking seatbelt, that's I should not. I should not worry about it being illegal. No, you should not. <laughs> if I want to smoke a fucking joint, I should not have to worry about it being illegal. Right. Absolutely right. You know, I'm just saying people I know. should be allowed to do what they. Unless you're harming somebody else or stealing from 
somebody else or fucking with somebody else, then what the, you're, you're fine. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Just be you and, and you know, these people that are like, oh, you can't do that. It's like, you can't do that. Like, what? I'm being me. I'm just being alive. I'm interacting with the world right now. Right. If I want to cross the street outside the white fucking line, I'm going to fucking do it. And it shouldn't be a crime. You're right about that. Okay. We're going to hear some music. Okay, let's do that. This is a Benoit request. All right. Oh, yeah, very nice. They're very nice. Uh, Melda May with a Roadrunner. Uh, one of her, one of her more, more classic songs there by the lovely lady. And, uh, before that we had a m moose b b Woody request, Meister Brow request, <laughs> called In the Light by Led Zeppelin. And we kicked it off there with the, uh, Benoit request of widespread panic. And it stoned me. Yeah, so uh, during that uh, time, during during that song set, uh, we saw that uh, Romes uh, gave his score on the Freedom Test. He got an 83. Very nice. Very nice. Um, anything above 80, of course, according to the uh, result thing there, is pretty good. Pretty darn good. I got a 98. I got a 99, so... <laughs> so we, it's not I can't a, it's a, we got didn't get the same score. It's it's not a competition. <laughs> how, can be, how can it be one point different? I have no idea. That's weird. Okay, no but idea. anyway, um, <laughs> I got a ninety-eight, and yeah, yeah, that's, that's good. And so. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right. Well, this is a re. So. Re <laughs> We're talking in the chat about this while we were on doing the music break, and before that, we, we were talking a little bit about this air. Okay, so now I found a story in the air, um, on the Daily Mail about this hijacked airplane, right? Right. It wasn't even a hijacked airplane. It was an empty plane. So why they use the word hijack in this article? I do not know. That's well, they a st stolen plane, I guess. Be they should have said stolen, not hijacked. To me, hijack means there's passengers on board, it's in mid-air, mid-flight, or whatever, or on the tarmac. That, that's typically... It's fucking media. But anyway, supposedly this thing happened. But my <laughs> thing is, is what if it's not real? What if it's just a story to distract us, a made-up fucking bullshit fucking story? It, well, that's a possibility. I think that this really happened, and... To distract us from what, you know, I know in my state, the midterm elections are, are the, 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 whatever they call it, the primary, is coming up next week on the right. 14th. Right, right. Which is next Tuesday, of course. Why do they always do it on Tuesday? I don't know. They that was do, the though. reason, but I don't want to know it. I don't care. But, you know, I, I, I. It puts a bad taste in my mouth. Right, and, and I don't. I mean, I don't know. Um, I think it would have got more attention if it wasn't an airport employee that stole well, the plane. They, they're saying it is now. They're saying it's an airport right. employee. It says it says a mechanic at Seattle Tacoma International Airport, SeaTac, uh, reportedly hijacked a Horizon Air Q400 with no passengers on board performed aerobatic maneuvers then crashed into the ground a short while later with at least one, possibly two F-15 fighters jets in hot pursuit, according to the unconfirmed report by Faux News. Um, so, <laughs> if if they would have said... We don't know. We don't know the truth. This is the, what, the sucky part about this fucking... World, not even just the world, but the state, the United States, is that we don't know what the fuck. But we but don't if, know what we're being lied to. If they were duped all the time, we've been being duped since what, 1913 at least, right, Cooper? At and least before that. You know, come on, people. <laughs> we're be, you you have to read between the fucking lines on this shit. You can't believe everything. You can't. You if, shouldn't. If, if they would have, if they would have said. 
that just some guy walked in off the street and, and stole the plane. That right. probably would have got be more different. attention because this right. guy this guy was already there by the by the right. airfield. He's probably a pilot. The airport employee is probably a pilot. I mean, a pilot is an airport employee, right? <laughs> They're not saying baggage handler hijack. You know, and the way in the Daily Mail article they use the word hijack. It's like you fucking dumbasses. This is unless there's passengers. It's not a hijacked plane. I mean, come on, dude. Well, I don't, I don't know. Well, let's see what. Let's, let's, we don't know. Let's this see is what. Gonna be, let, let's see I what. Don't, what. Ben, don't be putting words in my mom. I don't. I'm not. <laughs> I never once fucking said that. Let's let's see what Fluke don't, says don't about don't hijack. Don't, don't fucking do that. What? Okay. Hijack. It sounds like a carjacking. It says right. to stop and rob a vehicle <laughs> right. in transit. So it's not a hijacking. It's just a theft. Right, it's a theft. It's not a hijack. All right. If it even happened. But you know, the the media is a bunch of morons. Yeah, and they're a bunch of bullshitters too. And they say what the government tells them to say. So if this is a made up fucking deal, you know, they're gonna make the government's gonna make up it, make it up, and they're gonna fucking say, oh yeah, all these reporters will show up and everything. You know, it, it 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 could be a totally a stage event, is what I'm saying. Sure. Because that's what they do. It's it's called to me. It's called psychological warfare. They get us. They they create a scenario, and get us distracted on it, so they can do their dirty deeds under our noses, under our noses, and you know we we we're fucking clueless. Until we see the oppression become harder and harder. You know, we don't see the deal make, get done, but we feel it when it happens and when it gets in, in, put in place. You know? Sure. It's, it's like fully being strangled. Like, you know, you get your, they get their throat around your neck. They keep pushing it down harder. You know, and that's what government is right now. Grand, Grand Theft Airplane, there you go. Uh, G, GTA, still a, still a GTA. Um. Grand Theft Auto? <laughs> That's a video game. Yeah, I know, but, but it's Grand Theft <laughs> Air, Airplane. <laughs> you can't, it's not an auto, it's an air, oh, GTA, yeah, Grand Theft Airplane. Yes, yes. yes. <laughs> so it's interesting that they they do this uh, like if this was a a false flag event. Which they, it is. They, I'm saying I'm that, calling it right now. Okay. This is fucking bullshit. So, so it's interesting. I'm it right now. Interesting. They would do that this week, right after they've blackballed Alex Jones. Exactly. <laughs> so and that's been that's been no, one that's been one of the one of the big stories okay. of the week. One of the big okay, stories. I'm saying psychological warfare. It's called fucking with your mind, aka mental masturbation. This is how they fucking mental masturbate. <laughs> now wait, here, see, here's, here's the here's the per here, here, here's the perfect response here in the chat from Ben. Fuck okay. Alex. But the see no the shit. thing is the see the thing is, it's not about Alex. It don't matter no, about it's Alex. It's not about a Alex. Was, Alex was a clown, and everybody knew it. Right. Everyone okay. knows he was a fucking the, ball But the ball thing ball. is, is if they can take a person that's got millions of followers right. on various platforms and all of them coordinatedly um, get rid of him all at once. They got him off of Facebook. They got him off of YouTube. They got him off of, well, they didn't get him off of Twitter. Of very, I, I don't know what the other sites are. Um, but but a few other big big sites that are out there that I don't use. Right, right. Um, all all on the same day. If they can do that to him, and you got people cheering them on that they do right. it, then the problem is much much bigger. The problem is right. nobody is safe from right. from from their games, from their treachery. No, nope. you're right. From their tyranny. You're and, right. And so. Um, uh, anyway, this has been a big story. There's been so many different articles and such I mean, on it. We're all, think about it, though. We're already subjected to tyranny, per se. Like, no one uses that word anymore, really, tyranny, 
or of oppression. Or per se. But this is what we are. <laughs> we are oppressed and we are terrorized. All right. We are fucking being terrorized and tyrannicalized by our fucking government that's supposed to be, originally, the original plan was the government was supposed to be small and unobtrusive. Okay? What do we have right now? Total uh, fucking surveillance. Well, it is like Steppenwolf. It's, it's just like fucking Russell Mean said. Welcome to the motherfucking reservation, bitch, because you're fucking on it. I don't give a fuck if you're a KKK member or not. You're on the fucking reservation, bitch. And you're one of us. No more of your KKK shit. It's not going to work no more. Well, yeah, ste- because ste- it's ste- us against them. <laughs> And there right. isn't them, and there isn't us. And you're either part of, you're on our side, or you're on their side. So, motherfucker, get over your fucking race bit bullshit, and figure it the fuck out. Okay, well, speaking of race because bullshit. Because racism is perpetuated, and has been perpetuated by government for a very long fucking time. You're a fucking dumbass if you buy into it. Period. That's how I feel about racism. Right. Okay, anyway, so the, the, it's about racism here. Um, okay. According to this article, and this is by John Rappaport, The War to Destroy Alex Jones, uh, Part 1. <laughs> I, don't know if, I don't know if he's got a Part 2 yet or not. I, whatever. It says, he employed hate speech and violated community standards. However, I went out and specifically searched for any hate speech that he might have done, and I could not find any. And I, I looked pretty hard in different places to see what kind of hate speech Alex Jones employed, and I found zero. I found a lot of disgusting crap. I, I mean, he's <laughs> he's an annoying bastard. But, but I, I couldn't find anything uh, that would have been considered hate speech in, uh, in my view of things. Um, it says, he and his huge website, InfoWars, stand as a threat to the Empire, they are building where free speech is a thing of the past, and only correct speech that supports their objectives is permitted. Monday, the coordinated war against Alex Jones escalated along several fronts within a space of about 12 hours. According to the InfoWars reporter, Paul Watson, anyway, apparently Apple, that's right, he was kicked off iTunes, Facebook, YouTube, and Pinterest clamped out on Alex Jones. Uh, Apple confirmed, which Apple, I guess, is Google. No, wait, uh, YouTube is Google. I was just trying to figure there was something. something it must have been another one. Oh, Spotify also took them off. <laughs> uh, anyway, so, um, anyway, if you've been looking at all, you, you've seen this story all week long uh, about Alex and, and what's happened to him and his, in the, in the uh, InfoWars empire, I guess you would call it. Uh, there on that, but interestingly and not unsurprisingly, um, <laughs> Apple. Uh, I mean, uh, Alex had a, a application, an app for for phones on um, on the uh, Apple Store, right? For for iPhones, and apparently within the a few hours after he had been down dumbed down or taken off by all these sites, his application jumped to number four, and then the next day to number one. Uh, so people said, all right, well, you're going to block him from where we used to watch him, or we've never heard of this guy, but we want to watch him. Um, and, and, and so everybody started grabbing and downloading his app. Oh, also in the Google Play Store. Okay, Kate. Okay. Um, and I don't know what happened there or that on that, but I think now um, they are looking at pro- probably taking his app down, which is what I said immediately when I saw this this article. That okay, well they'll just they'll just take his app off. How did it stay in the Apple Store or the Google Store for that matter? If they find him un- unacceptable, um, <laughs> but, but people will find another way. And he is also on uh, uh, other sites like BitChute and uh, on Minds, I think, on Minds, uh, and, and, and other sites like that. It is a huge story be- because of, of what it is and, and what, what they're doing and what they 
have done and what they will continue to do if they can get away with it and and people uh, not not standing up uh, against it. Um, but apparently that's not what's going on. People are saying, you know, screw you guys. Uh, I, I, maybe I don't even know who Alex Jones is, but now there's so much information about him, I'm going to go find him out, listen to him, and see what he's saying that's pissing you off so much that you got to try and shut this guy down. <laughs> that's, that's, that's where it comes to with that. Um, I, I, you know, to me, whatever. Alex, I used to like Alex back in the day. I liked a lot of his, I liked his movies, you know. Yeah, some of his movies are good. And and his, his show used to be good before it turned into ninety percent commercial. Right. Yeah. It's, it's, it was it. like he had to get endorsements and stuff. To keep, and I get it. He had to keep it going. But you know what? He just went off the chart. Right. He, he started just, sucking like, Trump's dick and yeah, just being a, like, a fuck you, bitch. It's like what, what is this, man? What's all this crap you're talking? You're gonna trust this government guy and right? Fuck and, you. And, and so I, sell out. I, it didn't make well, any sense. Just sell out. I just said it here. Alex Jones fucking sell out. Oh yeah, you're not the first, but yeah. Nope. <laughs> but you're fucking sell out, bitch. He went on the View. See, I didn't even know that. Oh God. <laughs> You went on a fucking view? Uh, what? Yeah, apparently. Did you non-mainstream media? Fuck off. Yeah. Me. A anyway, whatever. That, that was, like I said, it's all beside the point. The point is of what they are doing. And, 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 they, they, and they, they, they. They. This is a coordinated Should event. Oh, never mind. What? This is a coordinated event by, by them. Oh, fuck yeah. Yeah, so. Um, I mean, come on. Oh my fucking god! This is you, you can't make this shit up. Like I saw a meme the other, like recently that said something about the onions gonna go under can't exist any longer because they're running out of fucking shit to make up. <laughs> because they they can't make up <laughs> shit. That... Reality, is, you, you can't. Yeah, you can't beat reality. Reality is winning right now. Yeah, you real, rea reality is so much anymore. more bizarre than than exactly. than anything you can make up. Bizarre is off the chart at this moment. <laughs> but but it's not People on everything. Are it, it, People are freaking out. This is the result of oppression. See, they met. This is where the mental masturbation comes in, where they they tell you there's a pill to make you happy, and it's okay to drink and drink because alcohol is legal, but weed isn't. But that's that's not deadly. But alcohol is deadly. But that's okay. Right. It's just an ass backwards motherfucking world. It is like fucking being in a goddamn chocolate factory, but it's not fucking chocolate. It's shit. Do that. How, how about how's that for a fucking visual? Okay. They could be in a Willy Walk in a chocolate factory, but it's not chocolate. It's shit. <laughs> and that's what the fuck you are. You're in the goddamn shit factory. Uh, well, but but you don't want to fucking eat that. But but uh, but on on some topics, people actually realize it's bullshit. Well, it is. It's shit. There it goes. Shit again. It, it could be bullshit. It could be human shit. It could be fake shit. It all comes down. It's shit. Well, it, 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 <laughs> it was this article from uh, Sputnik. Um, Twitter cracks it's up. Shit. Twitter cracks up as NATO accuses Russia of buildup on alliances' borders, which means on Russia's own borders. They're, NATO, they're, blah, they're, blah, blah, blah. Be, well, be, <laughs> I don't, anyway, it says, um, social media users couldn't help but see the irony in the claim that Moscow was somehow to blame for the alliance moving its armies oh, ever closer God. to Russia. So, so because they are moving Wait, their their armies closer to Russia over the decades, it's somehow Russia's fault. Uh, that that's what they tried to say uh, on the yeah, official. They see a lot of shit. <laughs> on the official Twitter account, NATO deputy spokesman Piers Cazalet posted a short clip called "What Are Today's Security Challenges." listing an assertive Russia alongside terrorism, cyber attacks, and other potential threats to the alliance. The Russian challenge, according to the clip, includes its military buildup close to NATO's borders, which means 
Russia, within Russia, is putting some of its troops on its own borders, where NATO is lined up on the other side of the border, ready to attack Russia. And so they think Russia should just sit back and not do anything, <laughs> apparently. <laughs> <laughs> it's like it's like the theater of the freaking absurd, you know. Uh, it, it, it <laughs> oh man! <laughs> it's, uh, it's, I mean, it's getting it, it, it's but, but, speeding but, up. Like I can tell, the fan speed has been raised from like a little bit to a little bit more to a little bit more. Now we're like at medium almost. Yeah, but if but if you read the, the speed uh, of the fan, if, if you, hit, you know the the faster the fan, the, the more the shit flies out. But but if you read you the know, re responses, projectiles more. If you read the responses to that guy's tweet on um on Twitter, you'll you'll see that they're just having a great time making fun of this guy for being such an idiot. But you know what's going to happen is they're going to say all those people that responded negatively to NATO. Are actually Russian bots. <laughs> what? That's what they're gonna say. Oh, I fucking got really. Come that's, on, that's, that's, that is, you see those sci-fi movies. We know you fucking bullshit. What the fuck? Are you fucking? Do people really buy that shit? They ask, they do. No, of course not. But they keep selling it regardless. Oh my fucking god! They, they keep pushing it out me? there. Um, Get a brain. You have a brain in your head. Use it. It's not there just to take up space. Uh. <laughs> All right, let's hear some more Think music. Think for yourself. <laughs> Let your brain do your thinking for you. Not your TV set or some fucking goddamn bimbo or some other fucking... I don't know. I don't know either. Uh. Anyway, let's, let's hear some more jams here. Um. Yeah, let's, let's do that. <laughs> This is crazy shit. We'll, I don't know, man. We'll come back. We're, we're going to kick it off know. Kick it off here with the best <laughs> Z request, a band called World Party. Oh, yeah, there. That was the Black Mirrors, Funky Queen. I'm digging on that band. Uh, anyway, before that, we had Samantha Fish with Somebody's Always Trying. Uh, from the Riverfront Blues Fest just a week ago today, uh, excellent stuff there, and kicking it off with the best Z request, World Party Ship of Fools. Right on. Oh my god, Samantha Fish is amazing. Yeah, oh yeah. You know that. awesome. <laughs> no doubt about that shit. I knew that was her, I, I wasn't watching the, the player, and I knew it was her, right? As soon as she started playing, I knew it was her. Oh yeah, cool. That's one thing you gotta have, though. You gotta have a unique voice that's recognizable. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. She's super talented, dude. She's awesome. Oh yes, no question. She played at revival, but I didn't get there in time to see her. I was so bummed. Like I was really bummed about that. Like I wanted to see that girl play live. You know what I mean? Right. Well, yeah. Like I said, you'll have you'll have plenty of chances because I'm sure she but... she's gonna be she's gonna be around. You know. Oh, she's a shooting fucking star, dude. She's like zooming. Zoom. Yeah, she's awesome. <laughs> she can't do wrong. I mean, she's so talented, dude. She's amazing. And Imelda May is amazing, too, though. You know oh, what I mean? Sure, yeah, no question about so that. There's so many amazing musicians. Like, you can't, like, pick one. You know, like, oh, they're better. Oh, they're better. You know, it's like, no, you just. Amazing musicians are just amazing musicians. You know, you can't, like, compare them or, you know what I mean? Or you can a little bit, but, you, get, you know what I mean? You gotta give them their props. I mean, I'm not a musician. I'm just a, I'm a dancer. I say just a dancer, but, you know. Yeah. Uh, there's more to it than that. But, anyway, whatever. Anyway, what do you got, Graham? Oh, hang on a second. <laughs> oh, you got a call? What? No, no. <laughs> Oh, okay. No, some uh, you know video tried to start on its own. Oh, <laughs> technical <laughs> difficulties. Uh, they do that from time to time. They do that, you know. It happens, you know. Freaking videos. I got my I got my all my stoppers in place and such, but right, yeah. yeah you know well, they don't they right. don't always obey me. Technology. Oh my God, me and technology do not get along at all. Like the <laughs> other day, 
at work, like, a week ago. Like, so I had to move this fucking tower apart, you know, underneath my desk at work. And I must have, jug- must have juggled the fucking power cord out a little bit. So then the, the, the thing was under my desk and I hit it with my foot like I barely tapped it. The computer died. I'm like, what the fuck? So then I checked out my fucking cord. Oh, the power cord wasn't plugged all the end. That'll do it. I had to reach up my computer like four times that day. I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I wasn't going to call the help desk. I'm like, no, I'm not calling the help desk. I'm going to figure this out on my own. You know? So I don't want this, I'm glad I did, because I don't want the guy coming over, oh, your power cord wasn't pushed in all the way. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Sure, sure. Like, what kind of moron are you? Uh. <laughs> you know? So I'm so glad that I figured that one out on my own without having to come to help this, you know? All right, let me ask, let me ask the question. How many of you out there listening are still on Facebook? Huh? Huh? Are you? Fuck you! <laughs> Report. Facebook offers United States banks access <laughs> to users in exchange for their financial data. So, oh my Facebook God. is going to give banks information, and the banks are going to give Facebook information about what? you. About you. <laughs> U.S. tech giant Facebook has offered some of the largest banks in the country to help them get new clients among the social network's users in exchange for access to the financial data of the bank customers in order to boost user engagement following the Cambridge Analytical scandal. But wait, isn't the Cambridge Analytical scandal a problem with accessing data back and forth? And so you're going to follow this up with more accessing data back and forth. Anyway, J.P. Morgan Chase, Wells Fargo, Citigroup, and U.S. Bank Corp. were among the banks approached by Facebook in recent month, months. The Wall Street Journal reported citing uh, sources familiar with the matter. The offer was part of the company's effort to become not just a platform where people can connect with their friends, but also one for selling goods and services, the publication noted. <laughs> Banks struggle to increase their customer base, something which may push them into deals with larger, with the largest social media platform, which accumulates billions of users, the newspaper added. One large bank had already rejected the offer and uh, over privacy concerns, thankfully. It didn't say which one. Uh, the social network said... It had pledged to protect banking data from third parties. Right, like you've never been hacked before. <laughs> oh, God. It's, it's, a freaking, it's a freaking circus, man. <laughs> and they, what, they have you marked as the clowns. Oh, boy. And to go along with that, and, and I, I don't know if any of you are familiar with this uh, this this other site. It's called, oh, let me see what the hell it's called. Um, uh, where did it go? Where did it go? Where did it go? I know it's right here somewhere. Um, ba, 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 ba. I got it in my list here. Um where is it? I just had it here. What are you looking for? Oh, there it is. There it is. Okay. <laughs> so there's something called 23andMe, uh, which is apparently a DNA testing company that people sign up with, pay for, to have their DNA tested. Kind, kind of like uh, that other, what's that other one? Uh, uh, Ancestry. Anyway. What? Ancestry. Yeah, Ancestry. Uh, same, same thing. Ancestry. Same thing. Okay, so okay. popular DNA testing company signs a three hundred million deal with big pharmaceutical company. <laughs> it's 
Imagine that. It, it might be time for people to reconsider before they spit in the tube. Right. Online genetic testing services are wildly popular. Many people you can't use, get away from it. Many people use services such as 23. Yeah, yeah, you can. You can not not and do it. Uh, such as 23andMe <laughs> and Ancestry.com. Learn about their ancestral pasts. Many also, many also use these services to gain more profound insights into their biological right. makeup, which right. is often used to assess risk for degenerative diseases, such as cancer. Uh, this information offers more trivial insights. Okay, well, whatever. They signed a deal with this pharmaceutical company, $300 million, uh, to get your information from the sites that you've already paid to wow. have uh, your, your information given to you. paid them. Imagine that. To do this. Now, not only this, but you know who else is signing up with them? Who? Insurance companies. Oh, of course. Well, yeah. So if you have if you have a any kind of like a, a genetic uh, defect, the these right. insurance companies are going to have that information. Uh, for, and they're going to be like, no, we're not going to insure you. Yeah. Fucking, they're they're just going to say screw. Up. You know, and they're not they're not. Family history of fucking. Uh, can I say this? Whatever you might have, whatever, because, um, here, here's the article. Uh, it is on uh, the, da <laughs> the Daily Caller. Um, Crazy. <laughs> wow. No, I don't, I don't. So genetic testing kits can have long-term effects on your ability to get insurance. Oh, uh, shit. Genetic don't do it. Yeah, don't, yeah. don't do it. Genetic testing <laughs> kits that predict illness, uh, Illness individuals are, are likely to, to develop it. later in their life are directly available to con consumers. And while federal law keeps insurance companies from profiting off the kits in some cases, there are some still downsides to having that information potentially available to insurers. <laughs> yeah. The, so the, the, and you'll have to take time and read this article. I don't, I don't have time. Because uh, I got to do my last little diddle here, but um, <laughs> go ahead and read it. Read it. It's the, fucking oh my fucking god! <laughs> we can't make this shit up, dude. It's the onion jealous of the figure's ball. I'm telling you, we man. Kicked it. We kicked the onion. And, and we're just and we're just giving out the news that's actual. Right. We kicked the onions. Fuck you, ass. <laughs> Fuck the onion. Figure's ball is number fucking one. That's right, and this is... We don't need to make shit up. We don't need to make fucking shit this up. Is, this is... No, this, we're fucking... This, no, yeah. This is them singing about you. All right. Let's hear it, people. Enjoy. It's the freaking fall. Hey. Sergeant, Sergeant, Sergeant. We can't you. Just come in with this. Oh, that's a keeper. That's the Lost Fingers doing their version of Black Betty. Uh, a little uh, bluegrassy there or something, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> Great stuff, though. And before that, for Hansel, we had Rammstein with Du Hast. Um <laughs> Oh man! So anyway, we're gonna we're gonna wrap it up here. That's that's it for tonight. But tomorrow you got the dark table at noon Eastern with uh, Flash and uh, Vin E. I'll be on Sunday Ooh, at noon. Flash. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll be on Sunday with the blues at my normal time, noon Eastern. Uh, and we're playing trivia here in the chat. That Hal Anthony will coming up right immediately following me, 3 p.m. Eastern, noon o'clock Pacific, behind the woodshed, opening up the big old can of whoop ass. Can of whoop ass. And uh, maybe Flash will do another uh, off the off the cuff uh, dark table during the week. Who knows? I don't know. But he did this week, so we'll see. Um, and uh, Grammy will be back on Wednesday at a normal time. We'll be back here next Friday with another Freakers Ball. You Thank know you. What? Thanks, well, everybody. Maybe not next weekend. I'm gonna be here. I'll let you know though. All right, she's gonna let me know. So if it, I'm if a, it, I'll let you know. It might not be a freakers. It might be balls to the wall. One of the two. You're gonna get it one way or the other, yeah, folks. You're gonna get it whether you like it or not. <laughs> anyway, thanks to everybody that tuned in and uh, thank you. Chatted and and played along in the chat and uh, did the freedom test and just made comments and made requests and. Yep. We love y'all. We do. <laughs> All right. Peace. Peace.